Phil Taylor Jones Show. Today's subject is going to unfortunately be the three attacks that recently happened in Russia, Switzerland, and Germany. I'm your host, Chris Newman. Unfortunately, the uh, previous host, Phil Taylor, my brother, is no longer with us, Phil Taylor Jones. He passed away on the 16th of last month. <clears throat> but before we continue on with the show, I'd like to extend my deepest condolences to all the families of the loved ones who have lost their loved ones recently because of these tragic attacks and to be with those that are injured right now in hospital recovering to wish them a speedy recovery and to hope it all goes well soon and that they're back to perfect health to those who lost their family nothing <clears throat> can really replace your loved one i personally know that now but the memories and them being in your heart shall never die out. So always try to remember the good times. Don't let yourself be swallowed in a pit of sorrow as so many friends and caring ones have told me because that just can overtake you <clears throat> and then there's can potentially be no looking back and deep depression is no place to be. Now that they've gotten the condolences out of the way, once again, it's such a terrible thing to happen. My condolences as well to the people in that country that are suffering the loss because it's an attack on their country too and that's never anything that should happen. Also, uh, I'd like to point this out if you notice this uh, emblem here, it's uh, aviator wings. Uh, I don't mean any disrespect to anyone that is an aviator because I am not a pilot. But this was basically an honor to my brother. If you can notice, there's a diamond symbol in the middle between the wings. <clears throat> and while it does represent uh, women in World War II that were certified for flying or training or attacking, shooting, defending the country, <coughs> to me it represents more a diamond in the rough. Now, who was my brother? He was the most amazing person I've ever met in my life. And if you've ever met anyone in your life before that was so amazing, what awesome, and wonderful that they turned you into a better person yourself because of who they were, that was my brother. And so I decided to get that to commemorate him since he was a pilot himself and he loved flying, he loved being in the air. I got that for him to make it a little easier for him to fly because I know he's out there watching over me and he needs a little help with some wings. So I got that so he can finally fly free, free of stress, free of worry, free of pain, free of sickness, free of sorrow. So these videos are being made in honor of my brother. If you'll see at the end of the video, one of the credits mentions him and gives a special thanks always to him. He's always going to be in my heart. And I should never forget him. And I hope that everyone that has suffered a loss from these three places uh, never forgets them either. I know they won't. But also, I actually meant to say this, not never forget their loved ones, because we know that's not possible. We left too much of an impact on people's lives to forget them, but never to forget that they're there watching over you, even though they're not there. I've been told that many times, and I feel like he's here watching over me. But either way, that being over with, let's uh, continue on to the show. <clears throat> so there has been three attacks. One of them has allegedly been listed as not a terrorist attack. It seems strange to me that it's not you know, terrorism, I mean, it's not a radical attack. So this is the one in uh, Switzerland. I'll start with that one since this is uh, currently the topic right now, as far as I start speaking about it. A German open fire in the prayer hall, quote unquote, and yet, quote unquote, Swiss police said they found no indication that the suspect had terrorist ties or had been radicalized. Well, I mean, it's an Islamic church. Islamic prayer hall, so maybe someone was against Islam. So how could it be radical when usually Islam is the one doing something, I guess could be some of the logic behind that. This person that made the comment, his name is Navy Vet, three hours ago on the website. <clears throat> is it me or is that insane, he says, about the gunman open fire and Swiss police said that there's no indication of terrorist ties. Is it me or is that insane? Some nut starts shooting people in prayer. Nope, no sign of being radical there. What are these fools taking their lead from, Obama? <laughs> yeah, I mean, going and killing people in prayer, that's not radical, that's not extreme. You know, 
<clears throat> That's just crazy to me. Okay, so can you continue with Switzerland? Uh, basically, it was uh, Zurich. A gunman who wounded three people attending prayers after opening fire at an Islamic center in Zurich has been found dead, apparently after committing suicide, said the Swiss police on Tuesday. The official described the man as a 24-year-old Swiss citizen of Ghanaian descent, G-H-A-N-A-I-A-N, Ghanaian descent, just so in case you didn't know how it was spelled there, or for those of you who are unaware. But they did not identify him by name. They said he had no known links to terrorist groups, but that he had already was already wanted for the fatal stabbing of a friend whose body was found on Sunday at a playground in Zurich. We don't believe it was a terror act, Christian. Let just Miley, Miley, sorry if I butcher your name, the chief police for the canton of Zurich said of, of the attack on Monday. We have no evidence of a connection to terrorism. Three men were wounded in the attack, two of them seriously, all are in stable condition, which is a good sign. <clears throat> The attack occurred around 5 p.m. at a prayer center used mostly by Somali and Eritrean refugees just south of the city's main train station. Hours after the attack, the police found the body of a man on the Gessner Bridge near the city center and a short walk from the Islamic Center. Witnesses to the attack reported that the gunman dressed in dark clothes and a wooden, excuse me, woolen <laughs> cap had escaped on foot. The police in Zurich, the largest city in Switzerland, used tracker dog units to hunt the gunman. On Tuesday morning, the spokesman, Pete Jost, for the Zurich police, confirmed in a phone interview that the gunman was the man whose body had been found. Our investigation says the dead man is the shooter. Okay, so I'm not sure where the ties of the shooter come from, if it was any kind of radicalism or not. And believe it is radical to kill people while they're praying. I mean, that's not something that isn't extreme. But, you know, there's just too many deaths going on. I've recently suffered one, and there's been too much bloodshed, as I said in the last video. And this just needs to stop. People are cracking for some reason, or they're extremists. <coughs> and people lose their lives that don't deserve to die so early. You know, moving on to the second attack. Um, was actually kind of major in Berlin. Uh, basically what happened uh, is a Christmas market in Berlin. I believe that a truck driver of a semi truck basically just ran over everybody that he could in there. And the Islamic State released a statement on Tuesday through its AMAK news agency describing the driver of the truck as a soldier who had answered the call to wage attacks against countries fighting the group, anyone against Islam or ISIS, which is also known as ISIS-ISIL and there's a new one, Daesh, D-A-E-S-H. Did it offer no details about the driver's identity or whether he had directly interacted with the group or was just sympathetic to it. So I don't know the, also with this case, where the person originated from, but the person did, if I can uh, find this quote here. Uh, this is Russia, this is actually the wrong one here. <clears throat> well, it was a terrorist attack, obviously. And this just needs to basically stop, you know, there's pictures of the damaged truck and you can see Christmas trees hanging out of it. It'll be posted if I can find it in the beginning of the show. And this is just ridiculous. Germany is no longer safe. As uh, Merkel says. Uh, the people blame her for allowing all these refugees in the country, which is supposed to be humanitarian per se. But how humanitarian is it to your own countrymen, countrywomen? when they're losing their lives because you're being humanitarian by letting these refugees in here out of the goodness of your heart. And basically <clears throat> hurt the heart of the loved ones that are killed by your supposed humanitarianism. You know, it's just not the right thing to do. 
you know, you already can't take care of your own people as it is, and you let people come here that can potentially be terrorists and kill your own people. This is not the first time Berlin's been attacked or Germany's been attacked as a whole. There's been other incidents. And this is just terrible that this is happening. So, you know, I mean, in a time like Christmas too, this, this is terrible. I know personally how it's, I don't know how exactly it's going to be, but I know it's going to be really tough for me. I don't even have a tree up yet. I'm not sure if I can get one because the last one was raggedy. So we threw it away and I haven't put any decorations up. I just don't feel like I should be in the spirit trying to be happy when my brother's gone. So I know personally, to those of you who lost your loved ones before the holiday, how it's going to be so difficult to go through holiday time without that loved one that cared so much for you. And no one should ever have to suffer that through that. I wouldn't wish just <clears throat> losing a loved one, someone so close, like a best friend, like my brother was to anyone, even your worst enemy if I had one. So that's just terrible with all this stuff has happened. I mean, three incidents within days of each other. Now on to the second one. Let me see, Islamic Center, I did that one already. Okay, the third attack we already covered of Switzerland. Um, excuse me just a moment. Okay, Switzerland, and we covered Berlin, Germany. And now the third one, which, which is a Russian ambassador to Turkey, was assassinated at an Ankara art exhibit on Monday evening by a lone Turkish gunman shouting, God is great, aka Allah, Allah Akbar, whatever you say, however you say it. And don't forget Aleppo, don't forget Syria. In what leaders of Turkey and Russia called a provocative terrorist attack. The gunman, surprisingly, was a police officer. Described by the Turkish officials as a 22-year-old off-duty police officer, also wounded at least three others in the assault on the envoy, Andre G. Karlov, which was captured on the video. Turkey, Turkish excuse me, officials said the assailant was killed by other officers in a shootout. The assassination and embarrassing security failure in the Turkish capital forced Turkey and Russia to confront a new crisis tied directly to the Syrian conflict now in its sixth year. Longer term implications for the Russia-Turkey relationship which had been warming recently after plunging a year ago were not immediately clear, but some analysts played down the notion that the assassination would lead to a new rupture saying it could conversely bring the countries closer together in a shared fight against terrorism. Vladimir Putin, President of Russia, said on Russian television that Mr. Karlov had been despicably, despicably excuse me, killed to sabotage ties with Turkey. He spoke with the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, excuse me if I'm butchering the names again, by phone and the two leaders agreed to cooperate in investigating the killing and in combating terrorism broadly. Uh, it's just too much, too much craziness going on, too much terrorism, too many deaths, you know. What are we trying to do, population control and in the whole world or something? You know, people deserve to try to live out their lives without getting it destroyed and taken away, ripped from their, their loved ones, just because you have some kind of crazy notion in your head that someone that's supposed to be a god to you is telling you to kill other human beings. I mean, how is that religion? That's more like hypocritism. Someone's supposed to be a god, supposed to be agape love or whatever, or looking out for you. And they're telling you to get rid of people that oppose you. That I don't think a, a real god would do something like that if there was such a thing. I personally don't believe in it. My brother didn't either. It just seemed too fantastic. And then there's always the gap between the millions of years the earth was created and, but billions of years ago, dinosaurs were created. So what, how do you explain the time gap? Maybe I shouldn't have actually mentioned that in the show because I don't think he ever did. I just put it out there and I'm not very good with the words as he was. <clears throat> I need to be a bit more tactful. I apologize for even discussing religion here. I usually try to keep that out of stuff. It's just that uh, it kind of slipped out the way it was. You know, we, my brother and I do believe in the good things that come from religion, the golden rule, you know, doing to others as they do as you would have them do it to you, trying to keep up with kindness and respect, trying to help others. So 
I did get that much from religion when I was religious and I decided to leave it. But it's not to step on the toes of anyone that is religious. If you believe in someone that is there for you, you know, as they say, the at places, all places at all times, I forget the actual word for omnipresence and everything. If you believe that someone is out there watching out for you, then, you know, go for it. I, that's great to have someone that in your life <clears throat> when other people can't be there at all times to speak to and to support, have comfort and support and everything. So I kind of dipped off the subject there. Let me continue on a little bit more. Trump is blaming terrorism for all these ahead of time. Uh, trying to gain ground for his campaign that he's always right about the terrorism, I guess. I mean, it's kind of obvious. How can it mostly not be terrorism when mostly everything that happens is an attack turns out to be terrorism? But uh, that's just the way things go. Uh, it's just crazy, you know. Too many of these things happening, you know, I didn't really feel in the right mind to make any more shows after the two previous shows. I have been not watching stuff, I've just been kind of out of it for obvious reasons mentioned last month as my brother passed away and there are some videos <clears throat> I did to commemorate him, to thank him on Thanksgiving and to basically remember him. If you do want to see it, it's entitled the uh, Thanksgiving special slash in memory of someone special and another one that describes the details because someone asked what happened remembering Phil slash my brother in special thanks. That being said, there's too many people losing their loved ones recently and it's just not right, you know, there's too many things going on. Trump says the civilized world must change thinking, you know, you can't say that because the ones that are doing the killing, I'm not sure if that's who he was referring to. If he wasn't, then I'm wrong in saying this. But you can't tell the civilized world to change their thinking when the civilized ones are the ones not doing the killing. It's the uncivilized ones that are doing the killing. Either way, <clears throat> again, my deepest condolences and my brother, if he was here, would do the same to all the victims' families and to those that are in the hospital, may they recover well. I'm repeating myself, but it just needs to be said, you know, this is terrible that these people are having to go through this. Like I said, and I am repeating myself, nobody should have to lose their loved one early. I know personally how that is. And it's a terrible thing to go through, you know. It's like something missing in your heart that used to be there. It's filled with that person's spirit and all of their mannerisms and everything, all of their love and all the memories you have, but that person isn't physically there. You know, it's a terrible thing to go through to possibly next see them inside a box or see them in powder form. It's just the worst thing you can go through. So my condolences to the families and the victims. So anyways, I guess that's the show. I can't really think of too much more to say. Other than I always dedicate these shows to my brother, Phil Taylor Jones, May 27, 1958, to November 16, 2016. She left the world too early, as well as other people who have. So that being said, you know, try to maintain some kind of air peace in this crazy mixed up world that gets crazier every minute. And keep that smile on your face too as a direct contradiction to all the craziness in the world. Don't let anybody know that they can take your joy away. Smile through all the trouble. Try to make it the best you can in this world because we only get one life to live. We might as well try to be the best person we can be until the very end. As you would always say to end the shows, dump the hate and increase the peace, especially nowadays with all of this, these attacks going on. This is just going getting out of hand. It's been out of hand for a long time. So thank you for watching. We hope to see you next time here on the Phil Taylor Jones Show. Take care, everyone. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful Christmas and New Year's celebration. I shall try to do the same myself. I do have supportive people, which before I end the show, I would like to thank uh, everybody that has commented on the video videos, excuse me, that I uh, put out about my brother. They've been very supportive and loving and kind, and I do appreciate it. A new shout out to Liz Mason, one of his followers of the show, said he was a very sweet person, left some nice comments. I do hope to actually talk to you later on and look forward to speaking to you. You are such a kind person, really supportive of us, and he will want all the support I can get, you know, for me. So I did leave you a Google Hangout message if you saw my reply to your comment. I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you everybody for supporting. Thank you everybody for commenting.
Take care now. Bye-bye.